In this section, we're going to talk about container resources. We're going to start by understanding what is a container. We'll look at how to create a container, and then we're going to do a demonstration of that using Docker. So let's start by understanding what is a container. A container gives us the ability to virtualize an application instead of an entire operating system. This allows us to make the images much more smaller and portable since it needs just to contain the application and any dependencies rather than the entire operating system. The advantage this gives us, again, is that it's more portable. And every time we start that container, it's going to be the same, whether it's on our workstation or they're using a container orchestration tool like Kubernetes. To help us understand this, let's take a quick look at what we learned about VMs and hypervisors. We can see on the same piece of hardware we have multiple operating systems with various applications running on top of them. This works well and has worked for many years. However, it also does require lots of care and feeding to maintain the operating system for each application. If we look at containers, we can still have that hardware as our base layer, but rather than having the hypervisor sit between the OS and the hardware, we now have Docker sitting between the OS and the applications. Again, the advantage here is we can package the applications to just include the application code and its dependencies. We don't need to include the OS and all the associated patches, updates, and various configurations. One thing worth noting is that the images leverage the OS that they're running on. This means we still must maintain the operating system. However, this dramatically reduces the number of operating systems that we need to maintain versus a traditional deployment. It is also worth noting that some containers are based on the Windows OS. However, it is much more common to see Linux-based containers. So now that we understand what a container is, let's talk about how they're created. Since we're going to use Docker to create our containers, we'll use what is called a Docker file to create this. As you can see in this example, this is a file that includes a set of instructions for how the container will be built. In this example, we're going to be building a sample.NET application. As we walk through this, you can see the advantages of containers is that they can be created anywhere. This example will be using publicly hosted images, so as long as you have internet access, you can create this container as well. This is also a multi-stage Docker file, so it will basically create an application and then it will repackage it so it is a lighter, more easily deployable container. To start off with, we can see we are downloading the .NET 3.1 SDK image and also specifying the working directory. We'll then copy the project file to the working directory and run .NET Restore. We're going to copy some additional files and then run .NET Publish to create the application and place its dependencies in the app folder. In the final stage, we are downloading a new image. This is the runtime image, so it's going to be a smaller image, which will in turn make our container smaller and more portable. We are then copying the output of the app folder from the previous build image, which used the SDK, and then finally telling Docker to run .NET when the container is started. Before we run the demo, I think it would be helpful to talk about some of the basic Docker commands so you can understand what is happening when they are being ran. The first is Docker build, and basically this takes the Docker file that we just created and builds it. So it will go through and execute those steps in order to create a container. Docker images. This lists all the images that Docker is aware of. Docker run. This would take one of those images that we found and actually start the container so we can utilize that application. And finally, Docker RMI. If we need to remove an image, we can do this, and that essentially goes through and deletes that container image. Now that we understand the concepts behind what a container is, in this demo, we're going to go to use Docker to build our first container and then run it locally to ensure it works. So we're back at our workstation here, and what I've done is I've downloaded Docker Desktop. If you want to do that, you can go to uh, docker.com, you can click on Get Started, and then you can scroll down here for Docker Desktop. You can download for the appropriate uh, operating system you're running, Mac, Linux, Windows, all supported. So I've already got that running. Um, you can see I've got the icon here. Let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio Code, and let's take a look at what we have here. So what I wanted to do is just kind of walk through some of the commands that we're going to be running. We're going to start by building a container. And you can see here we've got our command docker build. We're using the hyphen t or the tag parameter. And then we're specifying the name of the container. In this case, ASP net example. And we're going to tag that with a version of 0 0.1. You can see I've got two commands listed there. The first one specifies the path 
to the directory that contains the Docker file. If you're already in that directory, you can use that second command where it just uses the period in place of the path. That's telling Docker to look in the current directory for the Docker file. So when Docker build runs, it is explicitly looking for the Docker file, which it knows will contain a set of instructions. Once we have the container built, we're gonna run Docker images to see our container, and then we'll run Docker run to start our container. And then finally, if we did want to remove our container, we could use a docker rmi command. In this case, we're not going to delete it because we'll use it in future lessons, but I at least wanted to present that to you. So with that said, let's take a look at our docker file here. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. This is a slightly different one than what we had in the PowerPoints, but the example, or excuse me, the concepts are essentially the same. You can see we're downloading the SDK image again. We're copying over a few different files into the working directory, but we're still gonna copy the files over to a .NET restore, copy some additional files over to a .NET publish, and then in the final stage, we're downloading the runtime now instead of the SDK. Then it will copy the files that the previous state published to the app folder, and then tell Docker to run .NET when the container is started. So with that said, let's go ahead and see this in action. So again here, I'm just gonna copy this full command just so we can see how it would run if the Docker file was in a different directory. So we'll go ahead and paste this and run. And you can see it's starting to execute that command. So step one of 12, it's gonna go ahead and download the SDK images. So we'll let this run for a while and just follow along. Insert bad joke about movie magic. All right, now we can see we finished, and you can see it just basically follows along step through step here. So let's go ahead and do Docker images. And now we can see we've got our images here. So this is the image that we created, our ASP.NET example with the tag 0.1. And you can also see it downloaded the SDK as well as the runtime. And if we take a look, you can see the big size difference between the SDK as well as the runtime. So that's why it makes sense to download that smaller image so it's much more portable uh, and easier to move around. So now that we've got it, uh, we've created our image, let's go ahead and run it. So here I'm just gonna execute the docker run command and you can see we're basically doing docker run. We're using the hyphen D or detached parameter so that it runs in the background. Uh, we're also specifying the port that it's gonna connect to. So basically we're saying we're mapping port 8080 to port 80, which is the container is listening on. Uh, so essentially it's just a translation. So we'll be able to access that port on 8080, which Docker will translate to port 80 for the container. And then we're specifying the image. So ASP.NET example 0.1. So let's go ahead and copy that again. We'll paste it here and run. We can also do a Docker PS and now we can also see that the container is running. You can see that it's doing that translation of port 8080 to port 80 on TCP, and it started a few seconds ago. So now let's go back to our browser. Let's open up a new tab. We'll do localhost 8080, and there we go. We've got our Skylines Academy container demo. So perfect, looks like it's up and running. Let's jump back into the PowerPoints and see what's next.